Welcome to Here's My Story channel. My name is Luke. We live on a small island. It gets awfully crowded here in the summer, but you can't even see a soul in the street in the winter. We live in the southern part of the island. There are no other homes around, so our part of the island is always quiet. My great-great-grandfather Benjamin made his fortune as a sea merchant, building his business over many years. He settled here when he decided to retire and constructed a wonderful house on top of the island's highest peak. Our house may look fancy from the outside, but it's old and has started falling apart. Every time it rains, the roof leaks everywhere. The heating system keeps breaking down too, so we have to wear our coats inside. On top of all that, the water always shuts off when we shower. My dad would spend most of his time patching up the house, but he'd never complain. He was proud of our family. To him, this house was the crux of our family history. We've dedicated one of the rooms to our ancestors. A sign on the door reads, Family is the biggest treasure. We keep many family heirlooms in that room. For example, this is my great-great-grandfather's marine binoculars, his old tobacco pipe, and his pocket watch with a photo of his wife on the outside. That's my great-great-grandmother. My dad used to spend a lot of time in that room. He would sit me down next to him and tell me family stories while restoring or repairing our family treasures. One day you'll be the caretaker for this room. I know you'll treasure our elders as much as I do, he would say. Three years ago, we had a bad winter. A stormy day opened up a big gaping hole in our roof. The rain started pouring into the upper level. My dad climbed up to the roof to close the hole, but he lost his balance and fell. His death upended our lives in an instant. It's been three years since that day. Ever since then, I spend most of my day in the family room like my dad used to. One day, my mom walked in. Luke, I want to tell you something important. I've been seeing someone for some time now, and we, we got married on a whim yesterday. I was shocked. I empathized with my mom's depression. I understood her pain, but I could hardly believe her words. Why wouldn't she at least introduce me to the person she planned to marry beforehand? David's going to move in with us, my mom continued. The three of us are going to live together. I'm sure you'll get along great. David moved in the next day. I barely had time to get to know him, but I felt terrible for her. When I found out David had no source of income, I began to worry my mom had married a gold digger. Convincing her wasn't going to be easy, though. One day, while maintaining the family room, David crept in. He stared at our family heirlooms with a coveting gaze. He picked up a brooch that once belonged to one of our great aunts. Do you realize there's a fortune to be made here? He asked. These antiques are worth tens of thousands of dollars. I snatched the brooch from his hand. They stay with our family. They're not for sale, I replied sternly. Your mom said you're having money issues. David shrugged dismissively. I'm just trying to help. No sense in holding on to all this junk. First they're antiques and now they're junk? A surge of anger rushed through my entire body. There was no mistaking it. David would say anything to get his hands on our family treasures. Shortly after, my fears were confirmed. My great aunt's brooch went missing, along with a porcelain teapot that had been handmade by my great grandmother. I ran into the living room. David and my mom were whispering quietly to one another. How dare you steal from our family? Give them back! Those items are priceless! I yelled. David appeared clueless. What do you mean steal? My shouts rang through the whole house. I'm talking about the heirlooms you stole from our family room. Don't act like you don't know. My mom jumped up. Luke, what's gotten into you? Your stepdad didn't steal anything. We took a few pieces from the room and sold them. You know we needed the money. Mom, how could you? I screamed. In her softest voice, my mom said, Honey, I know how valuable they are to you, but your father's funeral arrangements left us in so much debt. We'll go bankrupt if we don't pay it off. We need to put the past behind us. If that means selling a few things to have what we need, that's okay. Please, try to understand. David was listening to us with a smirk on his face. My stepdad had convinced. No, tricked my mom. My mom refused to listen to me from that day on, no matter how hard I tried to get through to her. The next day, I went to the family room early in the morning to take inventory of our family mementos. I had to hide them somewhere else, keep them safe from David's grasping claws. I began with my great-great-grandfather's belongings, storing as many as I could fit into our great-aunt's wooden jewelry box. I carefully placed the pipe, 
the pocket watch, and the marine binoculars inside, along with a few other pieces of jewelry. I thought I heard footsteps. I closed the box's lid, worried that David was about to enter the room, but he didn't. The door remained closed, and the hall outside was silent. Just before I'd closed the jewelry box completely, a dazzling sparkle of green glinted brightly from one of the binocular lenses. I opened the lid back up and closed it again, slowly this time. The green light flashed again. When I took a closer look, the light appeared to be forming neat lines of letters. I took the binoculars out and put them up to my eyes. The lines had disappeared in the sunlight, so I put one of my grandma's old quilts over my head. Sure enough, the green letters became visible in the dark. My dear wife is my treasure, both from afar and really close by. My great-great-grandfather had hidden a message in his binoculars. Incredible! But why? And more importantly, what did the message mean? I thought about it carefully for a moment. Binoculars obviously allow us to see things from afar. That makes sense. But I had a feeling there was more to it than that. I repeated the sentence in my head over and over. My dear wife is my treasure, both from afar and really nearby. I realized something. The last part said, from really nearby instead of just nearby. Remember the photo of my great-great-grandmother on my great-great-grandfather's pocket watch? I had an idea. I took out the watch and opened the cover. I looked at it for a long time, but I had difficulty making out the small details. Suddenly, a light bulb went off in my head. I set the pocket watch down on the small table, took a few steps back, and looked at my great-great-grandmother's photo through the binoculars. Everything became clear in the magnified image. I noticed an odd design on my great-great-grandmother's large square necklace. I adjusted the focus to get an even closer look. No way, I gasped. It was a simple map. My wife is my treasure. I repeated the message again, assembling the pieces of my great-great-grandfather's puzzle in my head. Could it be a treasure map? I thought to myself. I grabbed a pen and a piece of paper and copied the map on the necklace. I knew the exact spot on the island the map was pointing to. That night, when everyone fell asleep, I went out with a flashlight and a shovel. According to the design on the map, I needed to head south to find a large tree at the top of a small waterfall. Having spent most of my childhood exploring our little piece of the island, I knew just the place. I started digging in the dim light. After a while, I hit a chest. When I opened it, the warm glitter of gold and diamonds danced in the dim light of my flashlight. There was a letter on top of all of it. My treasured family, well done. You've found the answer to the puzzle, proof that you deserve these riches. Pirates have been attacking the island every few months, so I'm hiding my fortune by burying it here. Share it with the ones you love, and may the family prosper once it's found in a more peaceful time. Love always, Benjamin. A more peaceful time, I murmured to myself. If only I didn't have a thief of my own to worry about. How do I keep it safe? After some thought, I took a few gold coins, closed the chest, and buried it again. I had a plan, but I needed to gather some money to make it happen. About two weeks later, the doorbell rang at our house. I came out of my room, strolling proudly to the front door. I knew who the visitors were, but my mom needed to open the door for my plan to work. When my mom opened the door, she was greeted by three women. We need to talk to you about something important, one of them said. My mom was surprised, but... She welcomed them in. As the ladies began chatting away, my stepdad came in. Who is it, honey? He asked. His face went pale as he realized who the women were. With the help of a team of 10 private investigators, I had managed to track down every one of David's past con victims. Each of their stories began just like my mom's. David panicked and ran out of the house. He was met by the police, who had a warrant for his arrest. They cuffed him immediately. My mom ran to him. Thanks to my son, she said with contempt, I see your real face. You took those poor women's money and left them with nothing. All of your talk of selling the house, letting go of the past, and not caring for worldly possessions was nothing but lies. You'll get what you deserve. All four of us are pressing charges. You're going away for a long time. I couldn't have said it better myself. When the dust settled, our family had everything we could have ever wanted thanks to great-great-grandpa Benjamin's treasure. We restored the house, installed a safe in the family room, and placed the treasure chest inside. We even had 
Family is the biggest treasure engraved on the safe door. We're so happy now, living a simple life in our little corner of paradise.